Sometime I want to believe that we have made much more progress. But then I think if we're not standing still, I think sometimes we're sliding back. The scars and stains of racism is still deeply embedded in American society. And I think what is happening is saying that we cannot sweep it under, under the rug or in some dark corner. We have to deal with it, all of us. To remember that our struggle is not for a month, a season, or a year, but for a lifetime is that what it takes to build what Martin Luther King Jr. often called the beloved community, a community of peace, justice, and brotherhood. But one day, 15 years old in the 10th grade, I heard of Martin Luther King Jr. I heard of Rosa Parks in 1955. The action of Rosa Parks, the words and leadership of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. inspired me to find a way to get in the way. We have lost hundreds and thousands of innocent people to gun violence. Tiny little children, babies, students, and teachers, mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, daughters and sons, friends and neighbors. And what has this body done? Mr. Speaker, nothing. Not one thing. When I was marching across that bridge in Selma in 1965, I saw some of the law officers, sheriff deputies, wearing on their helmet the Confederate flag. I don't want to go back. And as a country, we cannot go back. We must go forward and create a community that recognizes all of us. Yes, we are coming a long way, but we still have a distance to go. We have come a long way, but we must march again on November the 4th. We must march in every state, in every city, in every village, in every hamlet. We must march to the ballot box. We must march like we never marched before.